a major technological advance of great military significance. In 1980, the Pentagon caused a sensation by revealing a new futuristic aircraft technology called stealth. An aircraft which will be invisible to enemy radar. The secret new material absorbs radar beams, making detection extremely difficult. Only a few members of Congress had been told about it. The stealthy design of a series of top-secret fighter jets and bombers promised the U.S. the upper hand in its Cold War struggle against the Soviet Union. We're not just rolling out America's new strategic bomber. We're ushering in a new age of strategic deterrence. Today, while the Cold War may be over, America's quest to push aviation technology to its limits continues. But has that quest caused the Pentagon to finally reach too far? There's always this infatuation. The newest, shiniest thing is always on the horizon. In warfare, surprise has always been a key advantage. If you can't see me, you can't kill me. And if you can't kill me, you can't defend what I'm trying to go after. That idea has long been military aviation's holy grail, never more so than during the Cold War, when American defense contractors, including Lockheed Corporation's secret Skunk Works division, raced to develop jets and bombers that were unlike any that had come before. Secretary of Defense Harold Brown said today that the stealth project alters the military balance significantly. We are not aware of any comparable effort in the Soviet Union. The new bomber is not only still secret, in the future it is hoped that it and other U.S. weapons will be almost invisible. This was going to allow us to go across many, many miles into the Soviet Union without being detected. What made stealth planes so newsworthy was not their speed, but their extremely low profile on radar. This so-called flying wing, made of expensive non-metallic materials designed to absorb rather than reflect radar. No tail, no external engines, fuel tanks, weapons, or antennas. By the time stealth was used in battle, the Cold War had come and gone. Operation Desert Storm Forces were engaged... As Congress debated the program's massive cost, the Persian Gulf War gave America's F-117 stealth jet a chance to lead a very public charge. The F-117 repeatedly attacked targets in downtown Baghdad without losing a single plane. Flew 1,291 missions into Iraq, and not one bullet hole was on any airplane. By using the stealth technology of the 117, we were able to go after high-value targets. And because we got to them early, that war was a whole lot shorter than it could have been. There now is no question Stealth works, and it's been proven in combat, and it broke the Iraqis back, and it saved precious American lives. It took another conflict to see just how bulletproof stealth really was. In 1999, an American F-117 fighter was shot down over Serbia. Publicly, the Pentagon claimed it didn't know how it happened. Secretly, military officers knew it was not a lucky shot. It turns out that very old-fashioned radar frequencies dating back to the Battle of Britain are immune to stealth. Because a plane's stealthy design may not give it enough of an edge, radar jamming and smart piloting can be needed to prevent the worst-case scenario. Ideally, you would have stealth that was like the Star Wars cloaking mechanism, but it's not to be, at least not yet. The reality is that there's no such thing as absolute stealth. And there was another issue. From the aging B-2 stealth bomber. Stealth bomber is not simply going to be a gold-plated weapon, but cost as much as if it was made of solid gold. To the new F-22 stealth fighter coming off the assembly line. The most expensive fighter plane ever built. Critics still had a fundamental concern. It certainly raises questions about whether everything the Pentagon wants is worth the price. In 2001, the Pentagon announced an ambitious new program meant to address just this complaint, while solving many of the technical issues that had dogged other stealth planes for decades. The richest contract in the history of the Pentagon finally awarded the aerospace company Lockheed Martin had been chosen over Boeing to build a new fighter plane for the U.S. and Britain. Called the F-35 Lightning, 
It was slated to tackle the decades-old objection that stealth was unaffordable by serving the divergent needs of three branches of the military. A supersonic fighter for the Air Force, a short takeoff and landing jet for Navy aircraft carriers, and a hovering vertical jump jet for the Marines. The original idea was this fabulous package, a sort of fancy chitty chitty bang bang. But as time went on, it turned out that that was just not functionally possible. Building the Swiss Army knife of stealth jets proved to be an astonishingly complex task. You know, it's like building a hammer that's also a great electric saw and an electric drill, a jack of all trades and a master of none. We tend to be over ambitious about what we can fit into an airplane in a certain time and a certain amount of money. And we usually prove that our overambition results in a longer time to develop and problems. We were trying to do technologically some really, really tough stuff. Plans had to be scaled back from the jet's acceleration rate to its maneuverability. At the same time, design flaws, including to its engine, caused expensive retrofits and lengthy delays. Despite promises it would be more affordable, the F-35 was on its way to becoming the most expensive weapons program in American history, with critics calling it the jet that ate the Pentagon. We're back now with our series, The Fleecing of America. Price tag, a staggering $400 billion. That's about twice as much as it costs to put a man on the moon. The F-35 is years behind schedule, and so far has yet to fully deliver on one of its most unique features, the high-tech integration of sensors and weapons. But the Defense Department insists that it will one day give both America and its allies, who have also placed orders for the plane, the edge they need in the skies. It's too important to our partners. It's too important to our services who are looking at older airplanes that just can't keep pace with the threat. And I'm gonna get it out there as fast as I can. But who's to say that the F-35 will really outperform the jets that have long been essential to America's defense? Workhorses that are still proving their worth on battlefields today. In 2015, the Pentagon put an F-35 up against an aging F-16 fighter in a mock dogfight with disastrous results. One popular military blog in its account of the mock dogfight went so far as to describe the F-35 as dead meat. Lockheed says the results of the flight test have been blown out of proportion and that it was not intended to simulate a dogfight, but merely test the F-35's maneuverability. Both Lockheed and the Pentagon continue to defend the jet, but critics remain unconvinced. The technology is so complicated that we're questioning whether this is ever going to actually work. And if it does work, it has all of these limitations because it's just too complicated. How is this an advance from the old days? I don't see how it is. 